Kingsgate Media is proud to present Seed, the series, adapted for radio as an audio drama. Prologue, The Bedouin Keeps Watch. Written by Rob Skiba and Sharon K. Gilbert. Directed and produced by Rob Skiba. Narrated by Rick Hummer. Five miles northwest of the small town of Afik, Iraq, December 24th, 2002. The bright stars of Orion glitter against the inky canopy of night like diamonds in a sea of black. Standing in the opening to his battered multicolor striped tent, the Bedouin smokes a hand-rolled cigarette. Its glowing tip illuminates the old man's bearded, leathery face, revealing the wrinkled lines that so well illustrate the roadmap of a very long and adventurous life. He squints as he looks at the rustic watch wrapped around his left wrist. The time is 10.10 p.m. A deep sigh lets out a puff of inhaled smoke. His steel gray eyes gaze up at the constellation of the mighty hunter as he thinks of ages past. How many times had he stood watch like this, scanning the horizon, anticipating the fulfillment of the ancient prophecy. How many places did he relocate to in order to most effectively stand watch? Too many to count, and yet there he was again in the same place, Nippur, Iraq, in the location once known as the ancient city of Enlil. But this time something was different. The night seemed darker than usual and the stars of Orion brighter in ancient Aram, this most visible of constellations was known as Nephile, which caused some to wonder if there were deeper significance to this sign in the heavens. While some may wonder, the Bedouin knows. Indeed, there is. As his eyes continued to scan the heavens, he spotted Saturn. It was hovering just above Betelgeuse, Orion's bright shoulder star. When combined with Sirius the Dog Star and Capella, the three bright stars and one planet formed an almost straight line, pointing toward the southeastern horizon. Further to the east, Jupiter had situated itself between Leo and Cancer. Atlas and the Pleiades are straight overhead. It would seem the giants of old were gathering as if to witness some monumental event that was about to begin. About a mile to the north, a grouping of Bedouin tents rest temporarily upon sandy bedrock. A family of brothers had camped beside an ancient well. Familiar sounds of four-footed creatures soared above the heavy silence of the thick night, punctuating the dullness with barks, howls, bleats, and whinnies. The herds of sheep and goats sounded particularly restless, and so they should, for surely, this night has the stench of death. The Bedouin tosses his cigarette on the ground, steps on it, and goes back in his tent to await the beginning of the end. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Captain Zach Randall and his advanced special operations team prepare to reach their next mission objective. Little do they know, however, that they are about to trigger the final battle of a seed war that has been building to a climax for nearly 6,000 years.